tuning into Roll Call. The movie you selected is Halftime, featuring Jennifer Lopez. Well, hey everyone. Looks like Bria and I caught a little train on the six, and we are going back to our roots from season one. That's right, we have a very special surprise! Because we watched the Jennifer Lopez documentary on Netflix, Halftime. <laughs> it was like a gu- yeah, it was like a guitar string almost. It's because I've stretched this microphone stand to its wits. <laughs> um, sorry. Anyways, yeah, we're back in JLo town. Back um, on the block with Ginny. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm excited um this obviously is probably gonna be one of those loose uh bonusy type of episodes not too constructed there's not yeah. a cast here there's no script no nope. it's a documentary no nope. so yeah i'm excited to talk about it i did want to put a disclaimer out there because mm-hmm. at least for me i don't want to speak for you simone but if you agree let me know sure sure that since this is a documentary all the people who like conspiracy theories want to be contrarian want to be like realist i'm gonna just assume that this documentary is as real as it gets i'm not gonna assume that anything was done or said because there are cameras there Hmm. i think Mm -hmm. a lot of times with celebrities you know if they make a documentary or have a crew filming them sometimes people think like oh well they know they were being filmed so they probably like said this or did this so they look this way I would just assume that this is Jennifer Lopez as uh as real as possible for a documentary, you know, not because super raw, but we know she's real. The way she walks, the way she talks. Um but I think to counter claim or whatever, you know, to hit back with a little rebuttal from that argument is that celebs are always on camera. I feel like regardless if they have a documentary crew in their house, they're always being watched and scrutinized in some way or another anyways. So I didn't feel that, oh, she's saying this because she's making this documentary or whatever. Like I felt like it was just a very normal conversation that she would have. And it was actually less talking head moment where she was interviewed and more just some really cool behind the scenes stuff of getting ready for different award shows getting ready for the half t- super bowl halftime show um and i mean i guess if if we could write a little summary of the documentary <laughs> it, it's called halftime so duh that's it's it, it mainly focuses on her performance with Shakira, what it was like for her to learn how to share the stage um, and like kind of learning about the, I mean, we already know that this NFL is not the greatest company and easiest company to work with. So the backlash that she got with her choices in performing um, and also curtails the end of Hustlers, a little bit of making of Hustlers, her Golden Globe nomination and her Oscar snub, which if you haven't listened to that episode, Hustlers was a two-parter for us and we went really deep into the Academy Awards. So um (laughs) <laughs> yeah, new smoke for them. I got some new complaints. So. Me too. Me too. And, and the Golden Globes. You about to get it. Yes. Let it rain. <laughs> it's 100%. Um, and so that's majority what, you know, this documentary covers. It it ends on a really lovely note in um, January of 2021 when um, the Biden administration uh, was being sworn in and her singing at the inauguration um, and her choice of song um, really tied in well with her with her halftime show and her overall message with the halftime show. So overall, this documentary is so um, really jennifer's voice on being a proud latina woman and being proud of where she came from where her parents came from um and how hard she has worked in her career up until this point and she's just getting started baby (laughs) yeah i'm glad you said all that because i feel like since you know i'm on social more of that you know people probably think i'm way more biased (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, but I'm about to um, I'm about to talk my shit real quick because go for it. When this trailer came out, you know, mm-hmm. I saw everybody on on the all the trolls, all the haters on the internet. Who cares? Who's gonna watch this? Like nobody, nobody cares. Or like she wasn't even the best part of the halftime show, and she's making a documentary on it. Like, mm. and the I don't know. It just makes me. I, I'm already fearful for this world and our country and all that stuff. But man, the stupidity of people on the internet sometimes because it's like, first of all, Netflix, big company, definitely, they do definitely throw money at people. But, you know, people who are definitely bankable and JLo, mm-hmm. she has a fan base. Like, there are people who clearly watch this. It was number two on Netflix when it came out, it's still mm-hmm. number six when I just watched it today as well at at, not at work but I listened to it while I was working um but that the halftime part of it is a metaphor people hello like so many people had to clarify that that it's not just about the halftime show yeah that's a part of it but it's also about her turning 50 and what she's accomplished up until then so part one of that uh internet trade and then part two is like when it did come out or not when it did come out, right before it came out, all these headlines from all these journalists and news outlets who had already seen it, you know, I'm sure they got like screenings or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, are saying that or quoting her part where she's like, it's the dumbest thing to have two people share the halftime show. <sighs> they clearly, <laughs> yeah, they clearly missed that mark. And, you know, I caught up on the like double entendre or like double use of the word halftime because in the in the middle of the documentary or right at the beginning like she had just turned 50 Mm -hmm. um and that was obviously one of the big um like celebrations of being able to do hustlers at that age which we've talked about the bullshittery of that comment alone of women like wow you've achieved like this great thing at this age it's like yeah yeah so and what like have you seen my work ethic have you like seen how much energy i put into the show so it's i like that it had that kind of double meaning oops sorry that like double meaning and significance for her um and it really to me i mean who knows how much they cut out or you know chose to show but jennifer doesn't dislike shakira there's no issue with Shakira. The issue is, is that the Super Bowl halftime show is already a short show as it is with 12 minutes. Shakira on her own, no offense to her, but in my opinion, I don't think Shakira has enough on her own. Oh my God, you're going to get us flamed. I know, I'm sorry. (laughs) I don't think she, and I respect her a lot, but single wise hit wise i don't think shakira could have done this on her own i think she still would have had some other fun celebrity guests do some dance song numbers with her sing with her but i think jennifer lopez fucking could have run 12 minutes easy on her yeah. own with all of her hits like at one point when she's working with her music producer he she's like how am i supposed to edit all of your hits how are we supposed to pick of all the songs that you've done which ones stay in the show and be which, able to convey that meaning which people also and not jlo fans obviously but casuals you mm-hmm. know and people with twitter fingers would like to rewrite history and say that jlo couldn't carry the halftime show and that shakira was better and that she doesn't have enough hits to do it and i was like how stupid are you guys because she's done a vegas show which way longer than a halftime show easily she's been honored by mtv as a video vanguard award easily longer than the halftime show to do your hits medley for that Mm -hmm. medley for that she's done other performances like the bba performance we watch where she took popular songs but like she's very much capable of pulling off a medley of something for a show like this and then all her collabs alone like she didn't even bring out people she had songs with Mm -hmm. so imagine if she had her own like she didn't have to share with Shakira she could have brought out Ja Rule she could have brought out Fat Joe she could have brought out LL um, Cool J Nas like she could have brought out Dolly Mr. 305 (laughs) of course Mr. Worldwide 
I'm surprised that she didn't because they were in Miami. So that part, That's I never true. thought about but I think she was also focusing more on like femininity or like female empowerment yeah. and granted she well, did, did do the cover up. of the Bruce Springsteen song but like yeah I think it was more of like this also like cool girl power moment as well and yeah. I really didn't think that the issue was sharing it with Shakira the issue is just you know what is it I wrote down um I wrote down the quote about um it's insulting to ask two Latinas to do the same job that's historically done by, by one, one person, yeah. by one artist. Which is true when you look at previous Super Bowl performances, which is another point other people were like, oh, you know, why wouldn't she want to share? Because it hadn't really been that way before. Everyone, even when you think about, you know, Beyonce Super Bowl. Yes, Destiny's Child was there, but it was Beyonce Super Bowl, and those were her guests. Mm -hmm. Even though Beyonce stole the show during mm -hmm. the Coldplay one, Coldplay was the headliner, and they, you know, she's friends with Chris Martin, so right. I'm sure he was happy to, like, give her some time. They also brought out Bruno Mars. Mm -hmm. But, like, it traditionally isn't ever split. Now we've seen performances, like last year's, where you have, like, Dr. Dre, Snoop, it, Mary J. Blige, 50 yeah, Cent, Eminem, yeah, Kendrick yeah. Lamar. That's six people, which crazy. But mm -hmm. Dr. Dre has worked with all of them, so that's a good way to showcase his music. But most of the time, it's been one person. Hell, uh, the weekend. That's another thing that had a whole blast set of him just running around behind a camera and bright. Yes, and you want to say this? This lady can't do a whole show by herself. Yeah, fuck out of here. Like her career's longer than his too. Like yes, and the I think wasn't before uh, Jennifer Lopez and Shakira, wasn't it Maroon Five? And that's yes. when they were like, you got to get your fucking shit together, halftime yeah. show, like. It's been some shit. Just and Adam Levine running around trying and, to be Mick Jagger. <laughs> like, <laughs> gross. I the worst. But also Katy Perry did Super Bowl by herself. Katy Perry's yes. less time on the game. Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga. Although yeah. I'm not really Lady Gaga, but <laughs> um, I'm not saying that any of these people didn't deserve it or couldn't do it. Sure, but I'm just sure, saying sure, sure. In, in not in comparison either, but you know, in history of the Super Bowl, like these women or people or bands were capable and people are trying to say J-Lo wasn't capable or that you yeah. know, she couldn't do it by herself and not split that time. And it's not about sharing. Like if it's like, okay, you headline, but we kind of want Shakira as a guest. They had to split that small amount of time evenly amongst mm -hmm. themselves and then add guest on top of that so even like less time for themselves like terrible terrible yeah and, and you know what that's mr beyonce's fault mr jay-z that's i fault. saw like, him on that meeting I'm like come on jay and i mean maybe my commentary about shakira not being able to hold her own was a little harsh and that doesn't mean that i don't think she deserves it i should say obviously i don't know nearly as much about Shakira than I and inherently do now about Jennifer Lopez through this podcast. So, you know, if I, if, if I'm uh, not like Shakira does acting, but I think, uh, oh, no, was she in the Scooby-Doo movie? I don't remember. It doesn't matter. But like, regardless, right? Like, <laughs> uh, clearly we like, yeah, we've studied Jennifer now. We like know her career trajectory a little bit better. So, yeah. I just think for me, like when people were like, oh, Shakira was the best part or Shakira could have did it by herself, but I don't know about J-Lo. To me, I understand like Shakira is a global superstar. She just having, you know, an international multilingual fan base is always probably going to give you more access to people because now you've got like all of Latin America and, you know, wherever else that is in tune with, like, Latin music that is going to be, like, you know, listening to you versus just, like, us Americans who's like, you don't speak English? Like, oh, God. Like, so yeah. in, in respect to that, like, Shakira's done World Cups and, you know, definitely has a large fan base. But in the context of the Super Bowl, which is for American football, which is in America, like, you know, 
I would think that most people, and I I saw some of my people too who love to hate on JLo, you know, just being like, oh, Shakira was the best part. And I'm like, you know Shakira like that? Not to say that, you know, people in America don't listen to Shakira or black people don't listen to Shakira. Mm. But I definitely think Jennifer Lopez was just way more widely seen casually. Like, even if you didn't directly listen to JLo, you've heard JLo songs. Mm-hmm. You know, I can't say the same for Shakira besides Hips Don't Lie and Beautiful Liar because of Beyonce. Like, I just have never been into her or have seen her enough casually to be like, you know what, that new Shakira song, let me go, like, (laughs) play that back or listen to her album. So, I mean, obviously we're coming from very different cultures and a very uh, limited scope as Americans in some senses, but... Um, that's not to say Shakira couldn't do it or anything, but just that, like, I would think casually most Americans probably were singing along to the J-Lo parts more so than the Shakira parts. Yeah. Like, you might be grooving to the Shakira parts and be like, oh, look at her go. But (laughs) I didn't know any words. Like, I I knew hips don't lie, but Mm. yeah. So, (laughs) so great. Uh, Now that we've got, like, the hot... (laughs) hot hot takes out of the way and it's hot as hell i know it's a scorcher (laughs) today yeah um yeah let's let's talk about it um i guess kind of chronologically or like however you took notes or points you want to bring up sure Um, sure yeah so the documentary starts out with um her kind of ending yeah her birthday in 2019 Um, And then she was uh, kind of doing promo for Hustlers. Um, And so she she talks about, um, one of my first notes was for her to say in 2019 that her life is just getting started, um, you know, on her 50th birthday. I think as someone who, you know, is in there, like I'm going to be like in, in my 30s now. It's comforting to know. I feel like there's so much emphasis to fully live your life in your 20s and like that's it. And then everything after that is just like you're no longer living life for yourself because some people get married, have kids, and they're living life for other people um, and that like their purpose in life changes. Yeah. Um, and so it's like comforting to know. I really feel like the like your 40s and 50s are your like your years that – where like life is going to just obviously take on a new meaning for you. And, but we don't have the context for that because we're not, we're not there yet, but. I like to consider them like your don't give a fuck years. Cause I feel like most people I know, like, are like, you start caring less. Like you don't care as much what other people think. You don't care as much like to people please probably in general. Sure. And so I think that's liberating when you get to that point of not giving any fucks and just being like, hey, yeah, I'm do whatever I want. And I think you can tell that like in some of this, like when when she's like um, when she's talking, well, I, you know, she's just ambitious in general. But when she's mm-hmm. talking about wanting to do singing, acting and dancing and like, why can't or starting her music career? Yeah, she's why like, can't why can't I have all the things? things? Yeah. Um, I do want to say that in the beginning, my one of my first notes is her voiceover where she says, you know, she's been battling to be heard, to be seen, and to be taken seriously. Yes. Because yes. I feel like we discovered that in our season of her, definitely. Mm-hmm. So I, I was like, ooh, that's good. <laughs> and, it, and that moment ties in with a really lovely... And like touching and kind of sad moment that we'll we'll talk about later if we're going to do this chronologically. But um, they so she talks about the like cultural significance of making hustlers and how, you know, being in the movie industry for as long as she has been um, has obviously worked in an industry that's run by men and so being able to be on set with mostly women and being able to do this really cool project she's like I want to not only just make movies that people are going or that are going to be enjoyed by people but also have something to say and we kind of noticed that 
in the later half of this season with um, Border Town and uh, El Cantante and um, Lila and Eve and even being... second act, I would say. Has oh a yeah, message. Like, yeah, yeah, and that it celebrates women, and so that was really cool to see we see a little bit of fun like behind the scenes with pole dancing of course um and that's not to say you know she it's like funny when you say the like not give a fuck years because i think that's so difficult for a person like jennifer lopez because she is very clearly a perfectionist and wants to because she's fought so hard to be taken seriously and to produce quality things that other people are going to enjoy um you can really see that side of her in the documentary and being you know nervous about shooting things uh, like certain scenes in hustlers which i know we talked about in our earlier episode yeah i mean so much of the hustler stuff and the oscar stuff it was cool to see but like you know we did pretty damn good research i feel like because mm-hmm. a lot of it like we had talked about and seen prior so mm-hmm. um a lot of this too like i just i felt really kind of not vindicated i guess but i felt really proud of our season after watching this because i feel like we did a really good job like covering a lot of this stuff mm-hmm. and instead of watching this and be like oh i didn't know that like i was watching it like yeah i knew that like, <laughs> like i've seen that before or, like definitely that. and like so. the vanity fair article that she was reading when she was like she was like sitting in a makeup chair or something and she was getting ready and they had they're like Vanity Fair wrote this article about you. They think it's Oscar worthy. And it's like sad to see her, you know, start to get like ooh, a little excited. But she still didn't even know if she was going to be doing halftime yet because the halftime was late with or the NFL, whatever, was late on choosing an artist and deciding what direction they were going to go in. Um, and so to regardless of what happened with hustlers what a year that had been for her career wise to do this amazing movie still go to the golden globes and still be able to experience something that's just been so different from all the other roles that she's ever done yes she's been sexy yes she's shown her ass before but to do it in this new way with this new production team and everything was really was really cool. Um, and then on top of that, doing halftime and in a in a place where not saying that things are any better, but in 2019 things were still very contentious for our country. And she made a note to say, you know, I'm haven't really been that much into politics and i don't try to follow a lot of that however for me it's not always about politics like i don't see why people see some of the issues as politics where they're clearly social issues yeah that are happening human rights issues and it doesn't have to be so politicalized and she's like there's i live in this america that i no longer recognize and it's my responsibility to not be quiet anymore yeah. about some of these things one i would like trump trigger warning before before movies and stuff incorporate yeah. like it was like oh ooh, like I, yeah scrub that part of like my life out. Mm-hmm. um but i i have a question for you how do you feel about people who say like I've definitely seen people who feel like it's weird or opportunistic when celebrities are typically not very political or don't really talk about issues or don't, um, you know, don't talk about issues, don't use their platform to like try to uplift or whatever, make uh, opportunities for others, I guess. Mm -hmm. And what do you think about people who say that and in terms of like her... taking the opportunity at the Super Bowl of all places to try to like kind of touch on that stuff. I don't agree with the initial comment. I think that it is not celebrities jobs to be politicians, but I do 
believe that, <laughs> to quote a little Spider-Man, with that power comes a responsibility. And if you have a platform, you know, millions of other people can share your opinions or your social beliefs or your passions, but they don't have the same buying power as a celebrity might would. Yeah. Um, might would is not a sentence, but that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. You know what I mean? And that's so <laughs> I don't agree with people being like, oh, they should just stay in their lanes or like, you know, when people go up and do acceptance speeches at any award show and they bring up a social issue or a political issue, or they just even say the simple thing of like, go vote. And they're like, keep it separate. This is an award show. I think that it takes in the Jewish community, the Yiddish word for that is chutzpah, which means guts. And I think it takes a lot of chutzpah for celebrities who just say, yeah, no, fuck it. Like, this is something that um, I feel very strongly about. And I'll be damned if I don't say anything about it because yeah. I have millions of people watching me and listening to me. Um, and they could potentially risk their career over it. And I think it was a incredibly smart move and bold move for Jennifer's choice to include um, the Latina uh, girls like dance company for them to come out in these like kind of constructed cages to represent um, immigrants and, and families coming in that are being detained, children that are being ripped away from their families. Um, and 24 hours before the performance, the NFL was like, mm, I don't know. Do we really want to like, like you said, Bria, this is a, not a world cup. This is American football and the NFL is like the NRA. It's like <laughs> one of the most American like yeah. organizations. And so for her to be like, you find a damn way to get this concept into the show. And I think that it was really cool. And I get that, like, you know, Shakir was born in Colombia. get that she was like, uh, I don't necessarily identify with that piece. But for JLo to say, well, I was born in the US and I'm proud to be an American, but I'm also very proud to be Latina and I'm very proud to be a woman and to be able to uplift others. So I don't know. I, I, I long, long story short, I don't, I don't think it needs to be separate. I think yeah. it's really cool when celebrities are able to pull off to talk about social issues. Yeah, I think and I think that this really helped me not helped me, but really put the words that I probably was struggling to say a lot like last season and on TikToks and whatnot. But um, I don't know if you watched it, but I reposted Hello Teffy's TikTok when she's talking about watching halftime. And she says that, you know, we dehumanize celebrities. Mm -hmm. And I think part of the criticism of being like, oh, well, you've never talked about stuff like this before or your music's like, we said it. JLo's career, music career is about love. Like she's never made like yeah. a song that's like about social injustice or anything like mm -hmm. that. Like she doesn't have like any kind of like like Beyonce's Freedom or Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation or anything like that. But at the same time, like, she's a human being. And I think you should be concerned if anybody seeing kids taken away from their parents and put in cages isn't bothered by that and bothered enough to say something. And and um, I saw two people commenting like, oh, well, you know, what did she actually do for them and whatnot? And it, it's like, again, like, these are celebrities in some sense. Like, sure, they probably have access to speak with lawmakers more easily than, like, the regular public. But at the end of the day, like, that's not her job. Like, we can only act so mu much of them. Like, even as a constituent, I feel like there's only so much I can do. I can play my part in the system, but sometimes it's like, you know, I can't, like, you can't, some people can, you know, but not everybody can live in the streets protesting. Like, there are people who do that, and they definitely deserve the credit and all that, and probably way more than they're given, but mm -hmm. we all have our roles to play, and I feel like you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. 
in a visual front facing place if you say something and you're damned if you don't if you don't say something where like I've seen people talk about like you know Puerto Rico has had hurricanes and you know issues and people like well what has JLo done for Puerto Rico and like you know she never says anything and it's like oh my god like sometimes these people don't say anything because they don't want it to be seen like people say that they're publicity stunts like oh they're only doing this because it looks good or Mm. it's just like god like (laughs) can never be happy yeah that's the part of fame that i don't think is easy or should be taken lightly like you really have to have a tough skin for that and you know she talks about growing up with her mom and the women around her being tough and that rubbing off on her so Mm -hmm. kudos to her i would have bitched out in celebrity (laughs) like you know, I would have had like some tragic story or I just went like, I'm out. I can't do this just because of that kind of like criticism. Yeah. And people saying no and all kinds of stuff like that. But I really think like the dehumanization of Jennifer Lopez makes it easy for people to continue to hate on her and not look at her as a human being who's flawed and who knows that like even she opens with talking about you know when she was little loving musicals but always kind of being known that I'm not the singer in my mm-hmm. family or I'm not a singer and we've heard her say that before like I'm not the greatest singer but I work at it and mm-hmm. like you know I get upset when I see people talk about that like like okay like she knows that like yeah goddamn, like this is nothing nuanced <laughs> for her yeah <laughs> like there's no there's no room to be like you know what, maybe, maybe she's just trying her best. Like, it's just always like, ah, or like a lot of love. Like, there's no middle ground sometimes. And I I am seeing that on Twitter, like people who are watching it who aren't J lovers. Like, you know, I've never been much of a J Lo fan, but this documentary is like good for her. She's such a hard worker. Like, we, mm-hmm. don't, we don't appreciate her enough. And I'm like, Yes, hallelujah. (laughs) (laughs) Finally. (laughs) So I think that's what this documentary is for. Like I asked fans, you know, if there's anything they want us to talk about or anything they had to say. Someone did say that they felt like it was a little boring. And I could see as a JLo fan, like a lot of this stuff you probably know already. Yeah. I feel like it really has done her justice in terms of people who aren't, who are casual, like, oh, yeah, I've seen some J-Lo movies, but I don't know a lot about her, like, to really put in perspective her career and her journey for them. Yeah. And for fans, this is just kind of like a sprinkle on the Sunday, like. (laughs) Yeah, I can see that for sure. I'm also really glad, even though we did get a little Ben Affleck talking head about the, when they had talked about, um, what do they say? Jennifer said their appetite for my personal life overshadowed everything I did and achieved in my career. And like um, it was after the South Park episode had aired, um, Ben had, you know, talked with uh, with Jennifer and said, you know, how how could something like this happen? And Ben said it that she shrugged and said, like, I'm Latina. I expected this to happen. You don't expect it because you're white and you're a man. Yeah. Like, and so, and so for that, for them to include that little talking head, I'm super appreciative of. Um, And I'm glad too that I'm like cracking myself up because I'm thinking of the song. I'm glad. I'm sorry. (laughs) I listened to that on my way home. (laughs) I'm glad that they didn't focus too much on her personal life and her relationships not to say that they haven't shaped who she is or contributed to maybe some of the choices that she did um and there's so much more to her than that and obviously the stock was shot probably like pre benefer 2.0 and then cut and mixed and released this year um in that the purpose of this was not to be salacious about her personal life and her romantic relationships and stuff, even though she said, like, I like to write about love. And it's obviously something that gives a lot of people to talk about. Um, But that this focused more on who she is 
at this point in her career. Now, if I could change anything about it, I wouldn't say it was boring, um, but it would have been really nice to have had more of those talking moments where if uh, if they did go like, let's say a lot in how our show is run movie by movie or like era of movie, like her rom-com years, her like independent producing years, her this and that, like for her to be able to talk specifically about, you know, some of her favorite highlights in her earlier career, like that could have been a little nice. Yeah. Um, or talking about producing music and um, the different albums that she's done. Um, but I thought that overall the story that the documentary was trying to tell was a nice weaving of her history as an artist, how that's contributing to her choices in the halftime show, um, and also where she's hopefully going to next. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you brought that up and I didn't have to <laughs> because I saw a tweet that was like, you know, I don't think, you know, I I love JLo, but I feel like Ben Ben didn't need to be in the documentary. He was not going to call 5 seconds though. Like, I'm not going to call out that uh Twitter user, but I did retweet or respond and I did say basically that like you know he it's short he's not in it like a ton um and that he made a great point and a point that I feel like out of all her exes only he could have made because he is the only white one Mm -hmm. and um and yeah I was just like that's a weird hill to die on to be like well why was Ben in this for one thing and then to someone else wanted us to talk about that someone pointed out um well I could say I'm pretty sure but JLo number one fan who's always like on mm-hmm. her stuff uh pointed out that he's her soulmate so who else you know deserved to be in there but I kind of think it would have been cool to hear from like Diddy just from like his perspective and like being a part of her early music career yeah. and talking about that um, I doubt we would have got like Chris Judd or Ohani or, you know, maybe Mark could have. I thought maybe there. Mark would have said, um, you know, cause they, they talked about their divorce very briefly, um, and how it impacted her, you know, the kids were what, four or yeah. something when they were divorced. And then she talked about her time on American Idol and why that was like her, like the best decision for her at the time to just kind of step back and take a break. And she's like, I'm a single mom and with twins and, you know, having her love life like publicly fall apart. It's tough. Yeah. And and someone else said that maybe like there could have been more talking heads from like her parents or like her sisters and, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of give maybe a more personal perspective into like Jennifer and Mm -hmm. who she is as a person. But I think, too, we have to keep in perspective like the the point of this documentary and like the story it's trying to tell really is centered on the halftime of it all. And so, yeah, we get good. I feel like good flashes of stuff about like Mm -hmm. her music career and her movie career. Um, Also, Lil Raj. I was like, oh my God, she's a Lil Raj. And Big Sisk. She didn't put like just a sound bite or just like a flash of a review. She put a whole clip of our dude in there. So uh, because like... we know that Lil Raj like <laughs> always loved J Lo. That and he's just like he's that dude. Like that he's, he's that him. Dude. Like <laughs> don't mm-hmm. play, don't play with Lil Raj, even though we disagree from sometimes to time. Yes. Um, what else? How do you act? I thought it was cool seeing her like cooking. (laughs) Oh, I wrote celebs. They're just like us bickering (laughs) at Thanksgiving. Like, yeah, (laughs) that was funny. Oh, and I also love not that this has to be a focus on anything. Obviously, a lot of the outfits that she wore, we've seen because she's worn them to like red carpet events that we talked about. Um, But her Thanksgiving outfit with her natural curly hair, because she, she has pretty short hair. I don't, it looks maybe on the thinner side, but she, when she's not wearing a wig or extensions, she usually has it up in some kind of a little messy bun. But for this Thanksgiving dinner, she had this like gorgeous, like little 
vol- voluminous perm <laughs> and a turtleneck, a nice little beige turtleneck. Yeah. It just was like a really cool look. And I, I, I think she looks great no matter what she does or what she wears, but I've always loved her. I don't know if her hair is naturally curly. I mean, we know it is because in her early days. Yeah. Right. But um, yeah, that look, she kind of, it reminded me of like her character Harley on Shades of Blue. Like her hair Mm. was like that Mm -hmm. a Mm -hmm. lot for that show. But yeah, that was, that was cool seeing her, seeing her too, like some small moments with her kids, like when Max kisses her and is like, oh, I hate lipstick. <laughs> like <laughs> That was cute seeing, uh, seeing her getting ready to do one of those, we sit down with Jennifer Lopez and she mm-hmm. talks about love, her Oscar uh, potential nomination and all these things and seeing her right before that and Emmy comes in and is like, oh, I had to do this petition. Guess how many, like, signatures I got? And also, mad props to them for getting all those signatures because, like, (laughs) I was like, okay, yeah, like, 100. Like, and then when she said how many, I was like, oh, shit, like, good for you. (laughs) Yeah. It was for a pet. She wanted, like, a gecko, right? For, yeah, class, I'm assuming. Like, hey, she's they're going to be a problem to and yeah. i'm saying there because we just seen or found out that it means pronouns are they and them so mm-hmm. i keep saying she sometimes so i'm sorry but no thank you a, yeah problem thank you for reminding them. us um it was very sweet i mean max wasn't in it too much just those little clips here and there but emmy was in the halftime show too so it was really cute to see their dynamic um yeah. And see them rehearse. See them together. rehearse together. And with JLo's big um it was like American <laughs> flag feather thing. She's like, then I'm gonna open it and then you're gonna take it and then, like run off. And it yeah. seemed like it never seemed like she was forcing her to be this perf- or sorry, forcing them to be this performer. Um, and that it truly looked like this was something that Emmy was like cool with doing. And yeah, also didn't really seem nervous. I mean, maybe that just yeah. comes with having Jennifer Lopez as your mom, but and like, Mark Anthony, like, and Mark <laughs> Anthony as your dad, but like to get up on stage and to like sing kind of a high note um, is really impressive. I think for me, if I if if the shoe was on my foot, of course, I'd be, like, <laughs> I'd be fucking shit in my pants. and maybe she, maybe they were, I don't know, but I just I liked how they highlighted that piece. We all know Jennifer is very proud to be a mom and has like loves her kids so so much and probably her blended family um but to see that side of it was very touching i will say that when i initially watched the super bowl like you know sometimes j-lo has so much energy in these performances where like maybe she's not focused on like hitting the right note or you know being in tune but she's just like kind of yelling ah, yeah you like you gotta we put- can get it right like you know moments like that and so when i when i was watching the super bowl halftime performance when it happened i was like Ooh, like and then when emmy came out i was like oh she eating her mama up like or mm-hmm. they're eating their mama up like they really have a really strong, naturally talented voice. So yes. um, I was kind of like, ooh, that was a bad decision. <laughs> but like, <laughs> I don't think Jennifer Lopez cares. She knows, you know, that she's not the strongest singer and she knows how talented and beautiful Emmy's voice is. And I've seen her, you know, nurture that in other things. Yes. And it proves that they're singing live. Because yes. when you hear those hiccups, I'd much rather hear someone's voice cracking, someone not being able to hit the note or some kind of vocal strain, because that shows me that they're actually fucking trying. Um, and I think with a Super Bowl show, with the exception of maybe, you know, some of the bands, like, you know, if you're just like playing a guitar and you're like staying in one place, you may not be dancing, <laughs> right? Yeah. So I have so much respect for performers like Jennifer, like Gaga, like Janet, who dance and you got to know that they're so out of breath but they're still able to sing live. Yeah. I think that's cool. Yeah. Um, Speaking of other Super Bowl performers, um, I had to do a little research myself because I was like, I've seen this talked about before because obviously the iconic and uh, problematic 
Janet Super Bowl sure. happened in 2004. But like after that, I remember it being a big deal, like not only Jay-Z coming on, but like even like Beyonce Super Bowl was a big deal because it was like the first time since Janet that someone <laughs> who wasn't an old white man, <laughs> like, or, you know, these very safe performances. Like, yes. I remember years where it was like the Who and the Red Hot like, Chili Peppers. Yeah. And like, I love rock too, you know, but I definitely appreciate the Super Bowls where there's some choreo, there's some, you know, movement, there's some visuals going on and not such the who I remember was dope because they had like this big stage that was a screen and I remember like their who logo like that target mm -hmm, looking mm -hmm. thing being on there and stuff but yeah you know definitely playing it safe on the Super Bowls like no titties possibly coming out on that stage so so in reflection of that change there hadn't been a Latina performer since like Gloria Estevan I think and that's wow. crazy to think about but yeah just like putting that into perspective too like how how much the Super Bowl had changed since Janet Jackson's incident and how much the the NFL went out of their way to kind of make it like safe <laughs> like and to also see her use this opportunity to say something despite like all that history and stuff like it could have easily backfired on her where it's like Jennifer Lopez tries to uh bring immigrants to America <laughs> like or some weird twisted Fox News take where like you know Jennifer Lopez doesn't want to build the wall she has children in cages on her Super Bowl performance like cancel her like something like that yeah I didn't see anything like that because that's not the neck of the woods I stay in. But I wouldn't be surprised if there were people who did see that and were like, off with her head. Like, so. Oh, I'm sure. Um, another thing I know is that uh, at the point where she's talking about like how the media has narrowed in on her relationships and her personal life and also being like this running joke you know, she shows uh, the footage from South Park. She shows Jimmy Kimmel saying, like, if Jennifer Lopez ever said I couldn't sing, I'd be like, neither can you. And I was just like, oh, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. which, which reminded me of Marry Me when, you know, she's watching Jimmy Fallon mm -hmm. joke at her expense and she mm -hmm. gets her all emotional. And then Conan O'Brien, his was terrible when uh, he's like, oh, we have our intern who's Oof. Ben Affleck and the help. Like, yes. and had like some little old Latina lady who's a maid. Like, first yeah, of all, fuck you bad. for embarrassing that lady. Yeah. And then for trying to make that point. Um, and then that one white chick, I don't know who she is, but fuck you for being all like, sister needs to keep it real. <laughs> like, I can't even like. Oh, and they were like, <laughs> she's getting too much to be a diva. She needs to yeah. keep it. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, calm down. I want to say Becky or Karen and all those things, but like. Calm down, Karen. Hold your horses. Like, who are you? Um, what did you think to, uh, this is kind of jumping, but I did note since we're just talking about late host and yeah. media, uh, David Letterman's joke about her ass. Oh uh, yeah. And they focused on that too and her body. And I like how, you know, she's always represented, I think a very positive body image. Sure. She's, she's used some like diet culture language out there before we know she eats very clean, which bleh, whatever that means, but like she doesn't drink a lot and she obviously works the hell out of her body um and takes you know pride in her appearance but even as a younger gal she always stayed out of the spotlight for being um i don't know maybe she's just someone who always has come across to me as like very like body neutrality and like loving what you already have and she's like listen i come from a family of women with curves and i always knew that about myself and i remember as a kid whenever i would hear jennifer lopez being talked about in the media if it wasn't about her personal life romantic relationships whatever it was about her butt um <laughs> And 
you know, we always make that joke of the assets, the <laughs> making <laughs> puns of you have the assets uh, to whatever. But I don't know. I um, I think her response to that was just like, yeah, and yeah, so. <laughs> It's not yeah. like I did I didn't turn around one day and be like, "Oh, wait, what?" <laughs> like, it's like I knew that about myself. Who gives a shit? Too, it's like especially in this new culture where like, you know, people were pointing out that like Kim Kardashian maybe reversed her BBL and Chloe and they're kind of and Kylie and they're kind of getting back to this like thinner, less curvy uh shape. Like J-Lo is natural. Like, it might not be, like, crazy, like, bootylicious, like, in person, but I think it's very, I've always said this is very proportionate to her body, Mm -hmm. but it looks rather, like, voluptuous on her body, you know, so it's Mm -hmm. not, it's hard to not notice, you know, that she has a wagon, Uh, (laughs) but, but, like, she's never... Like she said, you know, the ideal in Hollywood at that time was like real thin and blonde, tall, and you she know. was yeah happy yeah. to embrace it versus yes. like you yes. know extreme dieting to try to be something she wasn't. Like and yeah, that's something to honor. Like and even like women like Beyonce being able to at like twenty something make a song like Bootylicious and be like, This is what I'm working with, all this jelly, like and you can't mm-hmm. handle it and mm-hmm. I'm gonna embrace it before things like BBLs and butt implants were a big thing. Those, yeah. They kind of paved the way in terms of like Hollywood standards of that. Can't and- keep your eyes off my fatty daddy. Yeah. Um yeah, that's a good point. And I re- you know <sighs> I don't know what I wanted to say just as like a yes and to that in <laughs> in that um, when she was referring back to what the standard was and still is. I mean, let's be real. Yeah. People, Hollywood society, however you want to say it, thinness is more valued and you are dehumanized if you deviate from that curve, no pun intended. And if yeah. you have natural physical features about you that look different i'm just gonna throw her name out there not to throw her under the bus but if you have a different body type from nicole kidman like how are you going to make it in 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 this place and i think we're getting better with more body acceptance and um uh with more diverse roles and diverse natural bodies um, in there. But it's so hard to undo that mindset. Um, So I'm glad that she touched up on it and that she just said like, and that it didn't affect her in a way where she could have gone down a really horrible path and developed more of disordered eating and she could have been easily on those tabloids around that same time the same tabloids we're getting with like a rail thin Lindsay Lohan Nicole Richie Paris Hilton Brittany Murphy even Hillary Duff they were all struggling with that at that time yeah um and that she very much just embraced who she was and what she naturally had yeah um moving on what's I say we get into these award shows. Okay. I do want to point out, though, like, well, maybe I'll save that for the end, like, you know, our final thoughts. But, yeah, the award shows. Okay. Well, I did not think that seeing the Hustlers stuff and the Oscar nom stuff again and the Golden – I didn't really pay attention to the Golden Globes when we talked about Hustlers because Mm -hmm. so much of what I had been hearing and seeing is like, oh, the Oscars snubbed her, so we focused a lot on that. But um, seeing her be nominated, get ready – you know, talk about like if I win or, you know, mm-hmm. also green's her lucky color. The green and- thong was cracking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, hello, green thong. Like, yes. that is something. <laughs> this might be gross. If she wore it, I don't want it. But I was like, that is a hot <laughs> auction item to be like. Mm-hmm. But like, Jayla's green thong. Not that she wore, but like, you know, yes. shown in the documentary. <laughs> like, <laughs> Handle it anyway. with your like white gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Not worn, please, but 
Yes. I know some men pay for that. But um, anyways, just because it was shown and it was so funny for her to actually like be like pick it up and be like, oh, <laughs> like mm-hmm. um, anyways. OK, probably cut that out. That's so disgusting, Bria. Anyways, um, <laughs> not having focused on the Golden Globes before and seeing all the Oscar stuff again, I didn't realize how upset I would get again. Like, yeah, I was. I was back on that, like, ready to, like, rant and rave about the Oscars. So, obviously, we have a whole episode on that. So, please go listen to that if you have not. I have a feeling anyone who's listening to this episode probably will or have already. Mm-hmm. But I I wanted to look at stuff we didn't talk about. And I didn't think there was something we could touch on this time around besides, hey, go listen to that episode. We talked in depth about this. Mm-hmm. But I was thinking... Because when I watched it, I was upset again. And so I tweeted, like, I still don't understand how Laura Dern just won that Oscar. Not even her being nominated, but, like, how she won. Like, what was... Golden Globe and Oscar. Which is kind of rare. Usually the Golden Globe is, like, a consolation prize for the Oscar loser. Mm -hmm. Um, It's rare that you... And I think she swept award season that year. Like, she won a BAFTA. She won, like, all the leading yeah, up awards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like Will did for King Richard, which I'm wondering if that's, like, a new trend hmm. that they're actually going to be predictive of the winner versus, like, oh, this one, like, sometimes they give it to, like, the runner-up, like, or, you know, the Oscar winner traditionally doesn't win the Golden Globe or something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but so i started i was like can someone tell me why laura dern Dern won an oscar for that performance like anybody and no one could (laughs) but i you know tried to do my due diligence and research as quickly as possible (laughs) you know and i'm googling laura dern oscar to see like after she won people talking about you know her win why she won or anything of that nature and no one really talks about like oh like I can think of like Julia Roberts and Aaron Brockovich like the performance in that like so easy to be like oh she put on this outstanding performance as the single mother who blah 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 Aaron Brockovich you know sure sure Marriage Story is just like, oh, congrats to Laura Dern. She won for Marriage Story. And then like her history. And I did see an article too that was like why Laura Dern's uh, Oscar win means a lot for LGBTQ people. And I was like, why? (laughs) And so I read that. And that's only because she was on the Ellen show when Ellen came out. And so she's kind of blackballed. I don't want to say kind of. She's blackballed um, from Hollywood because of her adjacentness to a queer woman and i was like okay okay sure but it's not like laura dern is gay or trans or bisexual or anything like that but i guess feeling vindicated for hollywood having blackballed someone because of Mm -hmm. how close they were in proximity to someone okay sure um and then when i was reading so on vanity fair I did not know Laura Dern's parents are Bruce Oscar Dern. nominated actors. Sure are. She comes from a family of Oscar folks. Yes. So I was like, ding, ding, ding. Like, nepotism at its finest. Mm-hmm. And it says she attended her first Oscars at age seven. And like, I mean, the yep. the way into to in context like i'm looking at this in context of like okay why did j-lo get snubbed why did laura dern win Mm -hmm. and to have watched and you know did our season where this woman has worked from the bronx a dancer a backup dancer not even like uh like the dancer like paula abdul or something that movies uh music all that stuff from nothing essentially no leg up and not even get nominated crazy to me and then again like i said no one being like oh dern had amazing performance as you know this divorce lawyer who's gritty or you know takes charge or anything like that it was just like yeah she went for marriage story congrats to her here's like some of her career life highlights and stuff Mm -hmm. highlighting she was nominated twice for other things Mm -hmm. and I don't know, that just pissed me off all over again. And then 
there there are these moments in this article where it's like um she gave shout outs to women directors lulu wang and honey boy director alma harrell and Mm -hmm. suggested that the way forward was to focus less on the lack of awards being presented to women and more on systematic inequality of resources and on the lack of second chances given to women and diverse voices generally and i was just like like not that that's her fault but like what a blown moment for the Oscars to actually fucking do some of that stuff by nominating a Latina actress and giving her an award. I yes. also didn't know that apparently shorter supporting performances tend to fare better in the best supporting actress category. So her character was in Marriage Story for 18 minutes and 36 seconds, and JLo was in Hustlers for 53 minutes and 9 seconds. Mm-hmm. So apparently that's a factor which just makes me like okay oscars like maybe you need to have that as a criteria like you can't be nominated for best supporting actress if you are in the movie for this yeah more than this amount of time right like there needs to be some kind of like minute mark like less than 20 less than 30 i mean we get i get that it's a supporting role um but to have it wasn't in a it wasn't for me it wasn't just the lack of recognition and nominations for jennifer but it was just all aboard for hustlers constance Wu and all the people who worked Maureen scarfaria the yeah director, like... yeah all the people who worked on that show or sorry that movie for them to not even get editing writing soundtrack i want to make love in this club you know like <laughs> I mean, even I feel like sound mixing is like a, a pity award. Like we're not really here to. The watch lighting in Hustlers was the great. The lighting, the like, yeah, just the, but so it's that chapped my ass a little bit <laughs> to like rehash that piece of it, and yeah. you know, of course, Jennifer will say it's okay, it's all right. You know, she tries her best to like put on this brave face. But there's a moment that I kind of alluded to in the beginning of the episode um, where she's in bed and she's reading. And this is actually what got me. And I don't know if it's because I'm like channeling that Leo energy and that's like my one little small identifier for me to connect with her. But I will never know a defeat on that level but we know (laughs) what defeat feels like and what criticism feels like not in the eyes of millions of people but we know on a small scale um and so watching her she's in bed reading this bit and it's not necessarily a negative bit but she says she's quoting the article about being a criminally underrated performer and to get her due from an acclaimed from like the acclaimed creme la creme like film world yeah um and for her to to see her get emotional about that was emotional for me i teared up i don't have to lie i teared up at that part because i think you can say that you do this for your fans for your family, for your heritage, for what you stand up for, what you believe in. Um, But like you had said, she's still human and she still has feelings and it losing doesn't feel good. Yeah, I will say that I think this documentary and like that moment and just the a culmination of like her showcasing all this stuff and coming out of that and saying, you know, I don't do this for the awards and stuff. Like we read that after the Oscars thing. And yeah. I was like, yeah, right. Like I know you want to be like, you know what? You want to be positive and affirmative and all that stuff and be like, you know what? I, it would have been great to win, but at the same time, like I'm okay. Like I'm fine. Mm-hmm. But to see her, like, she was fine after the Golden Globes. I'm sure she was irritated that she didn't even get nominated for the Oscar Mm -hmm. and upset about that. But, like, I actually believed her, like, seeing her say that and then seeing all of this work she put into having a message during the halftime show and including those young Latinos 
Latina uh, dancers, dance girl troupe, and, you know, being able to, and this is also to, like, the contrarians out there who are like, J-Lo's not a legend. She may be an icon. She is, uh, she might be talented. Like, I feel like as an audience, we don't really get to quantify that for celebrities. Like, you can definitely own your people and who you stand, and it's very easy as fans to be like, yeah, she's a legend, and she's an icon, all those things. But at the same time, like, it's not it's not for us to decide and label. Like, I think we've gotten a little bit love drunk on the power of social media. Sure, and sure. like, if we say this enough, then it's true or it's not true. So if we say enough that JLo is in a legend, then it's true. And that's not true. Like, and two, I've, I honestly feel like, and maybe this, I've been battling with like some of my takes regarding JLo, like whether this makes me like a sellout or like, a coon so to speak as a black person but i just feel like sometimes like stay in your lane as black people sometimes like jennifer lopez is not ours she's like ours adjacent because she has a love for hip-hop and growing up in new york in the bronx and you know obviously she makes r&b and she loves r&b like class like the supremes and you can hear that in her influence but at the same time like she's a latina icon let Mm -hmm. latin people say she's not an icon or a legend that's not up to us to decide Mm -hmm. i'd be pissed if like we get pissed when like white critics or anything speak on black art and music and are like beyonce is garbage like or this isn't that revolutionary and it's like Mm -hmm. you don't even know our culture to say that like who asked you and sometimes it's like who asked us like so like have your opinions like we all have them but also like also know your place sometimes of like this isn't the discussion for me to like maybe i we need to listen as well just like we want people to listen to us just like women want men to listen to us it's not always oh not all men like just listen Mm -hmm. and you know just listen and let some of the like let latinas have that conversation there's plenty and she's not uh just universally loved by latinas i've definitely seen latinas like say like just like black some black women about beyonce where it's like oh she does too much or she's everywhere or she's not that great or she's overrated there's always going to be people like that even within your own people but at the same time like i'm sure the majority of people are like you know what she's done a lot for us Mm -hmm. there are young actresses and singers like selena gomez or even hell look at bad bunny and jay balvin like being able to be on stage with her do you think they would have been on the super bowl anytime soon had it not been for jennifer lopez and shakira like Mm -hmm. i mean maybe i don't know but like you know those are ways that she has opened doors for people and it might not be perfect it might not be always the best like acting role choices but like she's doing what she can't like god damn it like (laughs) get off her back (laughs) here here so i didn't i didn't even know what i was talking about (laughs) well it it, it, going back to you the point about is she an icon oh yeah and and not doing this for awards and stuff like i actually believed her because i feel like i was able and not that i wasn't able to see it before but like you you do get a little bit more perspective on like the work it takes and you know the the way that um like i don't like to like idolize celebrities but like they do create things that like help shape culture and give the voices and highlight things and may like touch your life in some way and so it's hard to like discredit people who do that just because maybe it's not for you Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean that there's not some little like look at those little girls who are so excited. For You're the, my to idol. Them. I look up yeah. to you. And for them to work with someone as big of a star power in their community at a similar dance company, yeah. exactly like working in perhaps a similar dance studio that she started out as a kid like to show to girls who look like her who sound like her to be like this is this is like your dreams are valid and oh gosh what was the line sorry i'm gonna be annoying and move my paper it was like 
being in this industry to be a woman of color who has the audacity to pursue her dreams can often be scrutinized. Yeah. Or like the line where I think it's more towards the end where she's like, you know, I may have been the first Latina in that room, but hopefully when I leave that room, I won't have been the only. Yes. Like, hopefully someone else or yes. more will come after me. And that's what it's about. And it's not even about people who are fans of JLo. Like someone can open doors for you and you not necessarily intentionally are following behind them. Like it's like when people try to discredit Janet Jackson's career and I'm like, people don't have to be like, oh, Janet is my like that's who I grew up looking up to. Like just the things she did from like an industry standard mm -hmm. will help people or have shaped things mm -hmm. in ways that you don't know. Just like you know, our ancestors and people who came before us have shaped the world we live in today, good or bad. Like, mm -hmm. you know, whoever the fuck came up with capitalism, like, you know, <laughs> I'm not looking up to that person, but hey, like he has shaped or it's definitely a he, so I'm not even play that game. <laughs> he has shaped the world we live in and, uh, you know, untouchable way <laughs> like so i i might not like be like idolizing that but like there's no doubt about like oh yeah like he had an impact <laughs> like um but two going back to the golden globes um like we did with the oscars i was like who votes for the golden globes like what what's that process like so i looked it up Ooh. and so the Golden Globes is comprised of HFPA members, um, but basically it's journalists and um, each, uh, where is it? Not what's their voting process. Uh, okay, who's in the HFPA and how do you become a member courtesy of Variety? Okay, okay. the HFPA consists of Southern California-based journalists who cover Hollywood for news outlets in 55 countries, including nations in Africa, Asia, Australia, Europe, Latin America, and the Middle East. Mm -hmm. The membership has remained fairly consistent for the past few decades. In 2019, there were 87 voting members. The HFPA accepts new members every February and March with the rules for membership listed um, among the requirements are at least four articles published in international publications each year and proof of pay payment for the articles. Only a few new members are accepted each year. So I just I think that's probably why she was nominated for the Golden Globe and not mm -hmm. the Oscar, mm -hmm. because it's the media clearly was like, oh, this is Oscar worthy. And like, this is clearly like potential for her to. And so I don't, I think the media definitely saw what the Oscars maybe should have seen in Hustlers. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't surprise me that they nominated her, mm -hmm. but I'm like very curious, like on the voting, um, the voting consensus there. Yeah. Um, I think that, I think, too, being in the media, probably, again, like we said, at the Oscars, like her celebrity factor maybe didn't help in terms of like them seeing uh, her be in the media for her personal life and mm -hmm. things of that nature as well. Um, but yeah, like I, I, I feel like they should have got it right more than the Oscars. Like, I feel like we're used to being mad at the Oscars, but like these journalists, like, they're not people who are in the film industry necessarily like the Oscars group. Like that's comprised of directors, filmmakers, writers, um, other actors. Um, and I don't know, like, I'm just curious, like, why they ain't uh, let her win? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's, it's not that the Golden Globe win would have been a petty win. Um, I don't think that's always the trajectory. I could be wrong, but sometimes I think that it's it's not always the case if people get a Golden Globe that they'll get the Oscar or not. Um, but again, it kind of talks about, or going back to what we were talking about with Shakira, out of all those women who were nominated, most of them, if actually all of them had already previously been nominated, or had won something in other circumstances. And I'm willing to bet that 
there, I mean, yeah, there's it's so hard to compare, but like, I don't know, or it, it is easy to compare. Like their lives were so different from Jayla, like I'm willing to bet that they didn't have to like live that. She was like, I was basically a gypsy when she like dropped out of school to be a dancer. She can get her parents approval for that and to work her way from not having rich and famous parents to help them. Um, and I like Laura Dern, um, like Florence Pugh, Scarlett Johansson, Kathy Bates. I mean, it, it's, it's not a matter of being disrespectful towards them and their career, but like, I just think it would have been so significant and meaningful, not just for Jennifer, but for her fans and for her community. Yeah. And that goes to say, like, I um I noted too that I never like when uh she's talking about, you know, not being nominated and stuff, she's like, you know, it's hard for my team too because, you know, they work so hard as well mm-hmm. to put me in these things like I'm thinking Elaine and Benny mostly but you know like her makeup people and stuff too I'm sure like they're uh hyped for her but yeah Benny they're and all Elaine, rooting for her yeah but Benny and Elaine more so because they're like her manager and her producing partner so like Elaine helped write Hustlers and wrote Second Act and it's helping her pick projects or find projects and Benny too is managing her and kind of doing the same thing and they've been with her for a really long time so you know it's like one of those like we've put this much work in and to see something come to fruition um you know is rewarding at the end of the day it, it mm-hmm. doesn't it's not the end all be all but like you know it's nice like so I never thought about that like I never thought about like those people also like kind of feeling snubbed as well and having feelings about it like i'm like i always would consider like sure you're like bummed for your friend but like at the end of the day too like they're getting paid to help her achieve Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know what she intends to achieve and so in some sense i could see like them feeling like maybe we failed too yeah maybe we didn't do enough yeah and so yeah i just had never thought about that so i thought that was like a good point that Mm. uh or a good thing that sparked like oh wow i never realized that i also never realized like i never thought about like how long it takes to set up the super bowl halftime stage oh (laughs) yeah that was it's so much back and forth on agreeance of what will be in there how to mix the songs how to probably getting bruce springsteen's permission to use to use born in the usa and um also fuck that guy who was like i don't know the female symbol might be too much like he wasn't he hadn't even thought about the cages she's like oh i thought you were gonna be mad about the cages yeah but he was like it might be divisive being a woman is device like come on let's pick our battles here totally (laughs) he tried to backtrack a little he was like it's a power or it's a symbol that i stand by and i'm all for (laughs) he's like i'm just trying like i thought he was just trying to catch the like red flags but yeah how jennifer was like i thought he was gonna have an issue with the children in the cages but okay (laughs) like here we go yeah oh boy yeah it's a nice it's it's an hour and a half like good segment of it i feel like that's a perfect length for a documentary um have you seen any like have you um i know you've seen like the stuff out there for like beyonce and janet jackson's documentary we talked about for a little bit but um have you seen um like lady gaga's or Katy perry's or any other like music specific documentaries um no and that could just be like, you know, again, like the circles that you choose to move in, you know, sure. you're only going to see so much. And I, you know, I had to take a Twitter break. So sure. Twitter is not the world. And uh, just a reminder, but I did see Beyonce fans and I've said this. And if you watch TikTok, I have a huge Beyonce poster in my room mm-hmm. if I TikTok in there. So um, again, Beehive, like everyone was like oh my god she like beyonce is a trendsetter like you know clearly like j-lo's copying her with like halftime and homecoming and they both start with h and they're both (laughs) 
<laughs> it's it's so stupid. They both in... start with H. So does horse shit. <laughs> I'm glad that you are That's so you know, dumb. getting to the same destination and not necessarily on the same train that I am on. Just for like <laughs> You know, there is no, we did not pre like talk about these points or anything nope. or st- anything. So that is maybe we free balling today. <laughs> but yeah, and for me, it's just like sometimes, like, I have to, too, I don't feel old. And, you know, older people are always trying to be like, oh, you're so young still. And I'm just like, damn it. Like, I just said this to someone, like, when am I going to be old enough? <laughs> like, but. So, yeah, that means too, I can't be like, taken seriously. <laughs> right. But, like, I was in it because Beyonce just released her song, This Is Where We Are in Life. Sure, sure. Um, she just released her new single. And I was in a Twitter space, which is like the, just sound and certain people talking. It's kind of like a live podcast, but hmm. a lot of it's just people shooting the shit. Oh, so people were talking and giving their opinions on the song. And um, some some people were at some point they stopped talking about the song and j- just were like, oh, so like when did you become a stan? Like when did you become a fan of Beyonce? And I was I was pleasantly surprised that there were some people who were like, my age who are like oh like you know in 99 destiny's child and stuff but a lot of times i see like fans who are like um oh i hope beyonce tours before she retires i've never seen her live and that could be just like um an age thing like they weren't old enough for in their parent or money to and access like their parents wouldn't pay for it or they didn't have enough money Mm -hmm. to see her Mm -hmm. or like i've seen people be like oh like I want her to have a solo album without her husband, like, or, or like a tour without her husband, like, or something like that, because they've never seen her like solo or something mm-hmm. where it just is like, damn, how old are you? And like, there are young fans like who just don't have perspective sometimes. And definitely like, I'm not saying that they don't do their research, but it's just mm-hmm. like one music documentaries aren't new like it's not a new concept (laughs) like there are people before beyonce who did this like so for for it to be like this thing of comparison is ridiculous like we used to get this shit nightly on vh1 like (laughs) and mtv that's that's what those channels were behind the music behind the the video diary yeah. yeah All those things. So I'm just like, perspective. (laughs) Yeah. So I've seen people definitely say homecoming. Um, I've seen people, though, counter that with like, well, Katy Perry made a whole movie. Like that was in theaters, right? Like part of me was in theater. Yeah. Justin Bieber's like my yes, world. Janet's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, Janet's yeah, just came out. Um, but you know, hell, her career goes back longer than that. So, mm-hmm. uh, and just yeah, I'm just like, oh my god, you guys are just reaching like truly. so hard, like truly. And yeah, so that's that's my uh, two cents. Very not even two cents. That's my five dollars. <laughs> like. <laughs> But um, that's my what else? What that's else? my half dollar or are people going to come for me because that also starts with an H. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously can't. That's the dumbest fucking thing I've that. ever heard. <laughs> but yeah, whatever. So, so that was another uh, social media point that I was just like, what in the world? Or pe- what's wrong yeah. With people? Now, the going back to the halftime show, going back to splitting it with Shakira. Obviously, I know this isn't Shakira's documentary, um, and mm-hmm. I have to be fair, I did not do my research, so I'm sure there's probably interviews on it or people asking her like, oh, how'd you feel about that comment that JLo made about having to split the show? But I would have been also curious to hear, hear her perspective on the matter too. Like if she was just like, oh, I'm just happy to be here. Like I'm happy to like have been asked to perform or if she was also like, yeah, I see the bullshittery of it, of, like, having to split yeah. my time. Not that I don't respect Jennifer or whatever, but, like... Yeah. I I don't know. It's hard because this is J-Lo's documentary, and yeah. it wasn't necessarily set out to be, like, about the halftime show. I think she just was like, I'm turning 50. Let's film, like, this year and see yeah. what happens. Mm-hmm. And a lot of stuff happened to her. Um, But I did think it was interesting that we didn't really get to see 
a lot of like them um kind of behind the scenes or just like like we like and i think that's just like how collaboration works now you know sometimes people make songs together and it's just like oh i'll send you the track like they're not in the studio together and that surprised me to see that and to just thinking about JLo's schedule like she was still promoting and doing stuff for hustlers in the middle of working on trying to figure out her part of the halftime show and so Mm -hmm. they have like on the phone conversations and Mm -hmm. and stuff like that and then there is a point where they have rehearsal together and they're talking about stuff and trying Mm -hmm. to flesh out stuff um but yeah it would have been nice like even if like during that rehearsal like they pulled Shakira aside for a second and was just like oh you know how is it like what is it like are you excited um you know what's your relationship like with Jennifer or Mm -hmm. anything Mm -hmm. like that to like also help squash a little bit of that where um I I don't want to say like JLo should have asked Shakira to speak nicely about her so that it's like oh yeah Shakira loves JLo like there's no animosity there but yeah I just think they were just like they were both probably doing stuff and maybe Shakira was like I don't know where she lives but maybe she's like in her home country or wherever she lives and working on her part there and stuff like that so it just Mm. seemed really separate to me but it would yeah it would have been cool I think to hear her talk about it and I I haven't seen anything about her talking about like the the misquoted and out of context context. uh, articles but I think she knows like sure you know that yeah, and I'm sure she's seen the documentary or something, or maybe JLo sent her a text and was like, I didn't say that, and like was able to send her a clip and be mm-hmm. like, this mm-hmm. is what was said. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah. <sighs> well, didn't she say that to Shakira? Like, when that was when they were on the phone, right? And Sh- Shakira was like, well, I don't know how much time they're giving me. And then JLo was like, oh, I'll tell you. Like, basically, they want us oh, to split yeah. the time, which is stupid. Like, they should have given us more time. Right. A um, longer show. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was separate that she said it was stupid to have t- two people do it. <laughs> that was a sep- but- that was a different conversation. But yeah, it's a bummer that out but- of everything of this documentary, that's what they're focusing on and putting there. But even in context, it's again not about doing it with Shakira or anything like that. It's just again historically, it had not been shared as two headliners. It right. had been shared as a headliner who can invite whoever they want but not so much like we're gonna have two big stars do this Mm -hmm. and now there's been more of that but still like it's just again out of context and stupid (laughs) like like my favorite quote from nini from real housewives now is when phaedra is lying about her pregnancy and she's like that is just so stupid (laughs) like (laughs) all the time stuff is just like it's just dumb like and the amount that all that kind of stuff spread so fast. And I feel like it's a character uh, trait to like, or like a good, a sign of decent character if people can actually click on a link, read an article, maybe watch a clip. Also, the documentary hadn't come out. I said that in my TikTok. I was like, first of all, can we watch the documentary before we start like riffing off hot takes and hating on like something she said without proper con- context like Mm -hmm. and if you want proper context there is context if you look for it like people who have actually like press journalists i was seeing people who were like i actually actually have seen the documentary already and she did not say that or that's not what that was about it's a fragment of what it was about yeah and it just goes to show like how easy like misinformation is spreading like with social media and whatnot and how quickly people are quick to jump on something without being like you know what let me look into like people are just like oh JLo said this oh she's hating on Shakira like I wouldn't take I wouldn't be surprised she said that of course she did like who Mm -hmm. does she think she is and I'm just like oh my god you guys don't want to understand. That's fine. Just mm-hmm. say that. But geez, like, ugh, I can't. Um, <laughs> anything else? No, honestly, I feel like a good, we're, we're a little bit over hour and a half now. I feel like that's a good sweet spot considering that the documentary was that length as well. Um, 
I felt like I brought up, I mean, we kind of like hit the, we hit the ground running with this one. We didn't waste time. Um, I did ask, oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, go ahead. I did ask people on social media if there was something they'd like us to mention, which of course was uh, some stuff we just naturally talked about. Um, I don't think we really talked about this, but like the racism um, that comes, and I think that might go with like the body convo a little bit, but like, and with Laura Dern, I feel like that was kind of- Sure, 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 sure. Like, look at this white privilege. Mm -hmm. Um, But, the racism and interracial well we talked about her and ben so interracial relationships so i don't know i feel like we talked about that a little bit obviously j-lo has had again she didn't get anything handed to her and she's definitely worked hard for it and she's made strides and opened doors for people Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that gets overlooked and and listen to our season as we talk about like you know roles that were intended for white women that, sandra bullock you know, she, could have had half the roles that j had yeah. <laughs> you know that her choosing to do rom-coms to highlight that like hey i could do this too um of course we did have some problem with that as well like not being visibly latina a lot of the time right. but i feel like that's like will you know you don't always need people in your ethnicity race culture to uh to be like these extremes like sometimes we just need people who are doing cute like little movies and to represent like we could be cute too like Mm -hmm. so um that's my thoughts on that we definitely talk about how she's an underdog and not even though she hasn't achieved as so much I think and like wants to serve underdogs as well because the documentary ends with her in a business meeting she opens up um an entrepreneurship to uplift underserved latina business women who are trying yes. to get the ball get their dreams going and um what an amazing opportunity for her to be able to say i have the financial stability to help others achieve what they want to do. And um, I think that that was really a great way to kind of end the documentary. And they kind of gave these little stats of like what she achieved um, in terms of like record sales, streams, fan bases on social media. But then after that, while the credits are rolling, they're showing her in this business meeting And she's like, obviously, we're coming to you to have money, but like you have money and you can use it for this like great opportunity to help others who can who are very deserving. Um, And then the last like bit of statistics that they put up there are like how I am so sorry for like forget the business like they're the company name of it, but like how what their trajectory is for like the next like 10 years or so um, with how many Um, people that they want to help so I think that really goes with the whole like motif of I started from nothing I wasn't given anything but I'm able to do that now for others and what a great opportunity that is for me and that I'm just getting started part in the (sighs) time of it all because I think again something that comes with that like part of your life and the don't give a fuck of it all is sometimes people like a Jennifer Lopez will work so hard to get where they like want to go and you know it's kind of like about them and their career and being career motivated but like being able to be in a position where like okay I'm secure in my career like if I take these risks like I'll be fine I'm not gonna get like I'm not a young star still trying to make it and trying to help people before I put like you gotta put the air mask on yourself before you put it on other people and I think hers is on securely now and (laughs) put trying to put it on and help other people at this point in her life so yeah I'm curious to see what else uh comes of that um we someone else said racism um and I think they were more so talking about like maybe the stuff with like the late night host and stuff so I think we talked about that Mm -hmm. um oh we we talked about well we talked about the cages and we kind of talked about the NFL trying to get rid of them which you know we I think clearly yeah is 
understand it from what we talked about that that's not cool and dumb and the nfl hella is dumb trash, but yeah, fucking trash um, what na, 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 trash na, 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 trash trash oh someone said anna wintour was at the premiere of hustlers or the documentary no, halftime oh i've seen i think i've seen that because i think um i think i saw like something about that and she oh no wait it was I when she went to go the do the Versace, Versace show. show, yeah, and she was the Anna yeah. Winter, like always famously, like just keeps her sunglasses on, very like Edna mode, right? Just like, but she said, yeah. like, yeah, when I walked by, apparently she was like, <laughs> yeah, waving to um, her or something. And this is K Metal T eighty eight, who always comments on our stuff. What's up? Um, and she also is like, oh, I wonder if she's gonna get a cover soon, which I don't has. Jayla's has been on the cover of Vogue, right? Yes, just recently. I feel like she has. Maybe. But if she hasn't, then she definitely should be. Um, what what a missed opportunity Anna went to her. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, yes, she was on the cover of Vogue twice, it looks like. Um, I'm trying to look at the date. Uh, this was one was in 2012. Um, and then another one is, shoot, I don't see the date, but she's wearing like a fairly cute kind of, um, dress, almost has like an Elvis print on it. Oh, Oh, no, it's like women dancing on it. Oh, darn it. Why can't I see the date? It doesn't matter. But yeah, she's been on, she's been on Vogue a few times. Another time, three times, maybe? Vogue Indonesia. I mean, it's like not just uh, U.S. folks. Yeah. It's got to count for something. Yeah, I'm not going to shit on like another country's iteration of the magazine because those are important because usually they highlight more people of color than U.S. Vogue tends for to. Sure, for um, sure. But Anna went, if the Devil Wars Prada is anything like the real Vogue, then I don't think Anna Wintour has any say on like like British Vogue and stuff. Like mm-hmm. remember that one French lady was about to take uh, oh yeah <laughs> miranda's job and she's like oh no i switched that real quick mm-hmm. um i do want to say that it was you know i love a selena moment so roger eber talked about her and selena mm-hmm. but it was so different seeing her for that golden globes and hearing she's her talk so about it versus like seeing the kind of machine and star she's become for the mm-hmm. current one mm-hmm. i can imagine like her hair and makeup was very simple back then mm-hmm. and this one was very like thought out she had multiple dresses also just highlights the missed opportunity of nominating her for our oscar because like we said before she would have killed the red carpet oh like, my god amazing yeah. yes uh, um and then also i just want to say I really enjoyed Laureen Scarfaria's quote in her speech for her award because she said, maybe because she's made hard work look so effortless for so long, it's easy to take Jennifer Lopez for granted. Mm -hmm. And I think we leave the people with that thought. Yes, I agree. So, yeah, I mean. Uh, It's been an, it was really great for me and I think for us to be able to talk about I think there's something very comforting and familiar after we have doing JLo movies. I mean, with the breaks and stuff we took in between figuring everything out, it was a year and a half that we were doing that research and talking about it. And um, I was really excited to come on and do this little mini bonus ep on, on it. And it just made me feel very nostalgia for nostalgic or whatever for, um, for our first season so i we're just getting started and no (laughs) it's not an answer it's an opportunity yes and i mean i i was way more excited to do this than i have some of the will episodes i'm not gonna lie just because it's like easy and very like i don't know jayla gets me going in Mm -hmm. a way that will doesn't and i don't know if that'll happen as like we're only like we're 12 episodes deep into will so you know take that for what it is there's more to come more to learn and talk about but i feel like there was just so much more to understand about jennifer lopez you know she is kind of 
not given her just due and taken for granted, dehumanized, undervalued, Mm -hmm. and all those things. Whereas Will is someone we chose purposely because he was and is, in my book, a darling of Hollywood and a huge star, and that's Mm -hmm. unquestionable even no matter what. So I think that, yeah, that just, that's part of, like, my excitement for doing this, but... I'm excited to hopefully there's more movies like we would absolutely do more content Mm -hmm. (laughs) there's more content to be consumed so um just waiting for that and check out our Will Smith season we're all the way up to Ali very iconic again another Oscar snub Mm -hmm. um iconic movie and uh legendary person but yeah this has been fun thanks y'all for going back down the Jennifer Lopez uh, Lopez IMDb Netflix uh, rabbit hole with us and uh, stay tuned have a good night love you perfect our dreams (laughs) alright and this has been another episode of (laughs) roll call and cut